Hello there, Maverick Traders. This is Rob Reinhold. It is August 9th, and we are one day away from the U.S. CPI report, and we prop and we are seeing a little bit of what I expected before the CPI report was a pretty low volatility day. So we're going to spend a little bit of time going through today, but look, there was hardly any news. There was hardly any movement in currencies, in Forex, a little down move in Bitcoin, and the equity markets got hit. But we'll look at that, and then we'll really look towards where we are in the cycles, and then where we're going to be tomorrow. And of course, we're always looking for setups and possible entry points. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional Forex and crypto traders. Maverick Currencies is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional Forex and currency trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. So let's start off with where we ended the day yesterday. So Anka took us through the velocity scores and everything. And you can see the cryptos had finally shown a little bit of signs of life. Look, we have not liked the cryptos for a while. This is not enough to get excited about cryptos. But you can see everything else was between a plus one and negative one. When that happens, we don't want to trade. We want to do less trading than more trading because as directional traders here, and that's how you make money in Forex, is being directional. When there's not a lot of direction, it's best just to sit and wait. So today, let's take a look at what happened. There really was very little news today. The equity markets are still under pressure for some downgrades. We had a Fitch downgrade last week about the U.S. bond market. We had a downgrade on Tuesday of some of the major banks in the U.S. from Moody's. So all of that is kind of still weighing on the markets. And the markets are falling, but whenever they fall, they recover. And then they fall again and they recover Look, it may finally drop out, but it's starting to look like this market's trying to make a bottom somewhere around here. And we have that 10-year bond after spiking up to 4.2%. It is now settled back and just hanging out right above the 4% level, really not giving us any guidance whatsoever on the next move in interest rates. So if we take a look at the movement today, take a look at these numbers. These are very, very modest numbers. This is a small, small number. There was not a lot of movement. We like the euro the best this week. So it was the strongest currency today. And we like the yen as the best short. It was the weakest currency today. But look, that's not a lot of movement. It's really just a day you should have been sitting on your hands, especially ahead of a US CPI report tomorrow morning. Let's take a look at the broad markets and commodities. And you can see S&P was down three quarters of a percent. Crypto down about the same. Oil stayed strong. We've liked the energy market in stock and options for the last three weeks. And it continues to perform really well. And as far as cryptos go, they just simply had a pullback. They had a big day yesterday. They did not break out of any ranges whatsoever. So we could not get excited about them. They just gave back a little bit today. That is it. So when we take a look at all of these things, where are we in the cycle? If we take a look here at the S&P. We had our really our first test of a 20-day moving average. You can see here, we've bounced off the 20-day moving average. We did not bounce off it. So we said, okay, since we did not bounce off that 20, the next reasonable point for a pullback is prior resistance. And you can see we're right there. We bounced off it yesterday. We bounced off a little bit today. It is not It is not yet told us whether or not this support level is going to hold. I imagine tomorrow with the CPI report, we're going to get one of two candles. We're going to get a big up candle, and that will say, hey, that was actually a bottom. Or we're going to get a red candle, and that's really going to be start of the The start of the confirmation that maybe this was the end of the uptrend. Now we are heading down towards the next test at the 50 day moving average. And once that 50 day moving average is pierced, that is a confirmation that this run is over. This entire run we had since May 
it's over and we're now in a new trending environment. So we'll have to see what happens. Personally, I think we get a report that the market likes tomorrow. Bull markets do this all the time. They test you, they push you, they make you believe they're over and then they recover. And the people that got out, they're left saying, oh, why did I get out? The markets are really good at pushing you out at these moments. So if we take a look and see where are we in our scoring system, we are below the 20 period moving average. We're above the 50 and they're both still sloping higher, but they're starting to turn. We're really close to a zero here. We're still at a plus one. So this market is telling us they'll be a little bit bullish, but you really need to be more defensive than offensive here at this point in equities. Let's take a look at the calendar this week. As you can see, there is nothing on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of any concern. This is why we've had lower volatility. But take a look at what is coming up. We've got US CPI coming up tomorrow at 8.30. This is going to be likely the report that bounces us off that support or sinks us down below that. And we're now looking at a major trend change in the direction of equities. Now, if that happens, we will definitely be updating our numbers and updating our projections. But at this point, we do not have any confirmation yet. So it's all just speculation and we don't act on speculation. We act on proof. And then we have GDP out of the UK on Friday and US PPI on Friday as well. Let's go take a look at some of the currencies that are actually moving. Do you want to be a professional trader? Maverick Currencies is the oldest US-based Forex and crypto prop trading company that will pay you for trading with our capital. Trade our capital and keep 70 to 80% of the profits. We are looking for traders just like you that are hardworking and motivated. Click the apply link on the top right of this video to see if you have what it takes. That link takes you to a four minute video that explains the trader position available and you read a list of FAQs that answer pretty much all the basic questions you have at this point. After watching the video and reading the FAQs, if you're interested, fill out an application, then you'll watch the full length recruiting video and then schedule an interview with one of our traders. Are you our next trader? The Euro was our favorite currency of the week on the long side. And you can see here, this is a daily chart. We are hitting up against some overhead resistance. No question about it. And it's just taking a little bit of time to push through. We have no idea when it is going to push through or if it's going to push through. But you can see that when we take a look at shorter term charts here, like the four hour charts, we can see the Euro is definitely trying to push back above. We might get one more pullback, a bounce off of this lower trend line before we go up but everything is pointing to higher Euro. So we continue to like Euro. And in fact, the Euro is now above a parabolic star. So the Euro is going to get a little bit of an upgrade from where it was at a plus one. The other currency that is actually starting to move somewhere is the Canadian dollar. Now look, I don't wanna to get too excited about this because overall we are way in more of a sideways trend than anything else. We're trapped between these two levels, but we did come down and hit the bottom of the level. We are now above the parabolic SAR. And for the first time in a long time, we are now above 50 on the RSI. Look, I'm not super bullish on the CAD, but when I take a look at what currencies are starting to show me that they could move higher, it's definitely CAD is starting to show me, okay, it's possible. We go to take a look at stuff like the pound and the pound is totally dead. We take a look at the pound. There is no reason at all to be trading pound. Now look, it is starting to coil. This is a tight range and this is a high base and things break out of the top of high bases. I'm definitely looking for the pound at some point in the next two to three weeks, but I'm not looking right here right now. And let's check in on the yen. The yen was our favorite short for the week. And we can see that here we are We've had three down days in the yen. This is a daily chart. We go to four hour chart. We're seeing this really nice low base form. If this low base breaks here on yen, I think we've got another run down to this lower level on any yen crosses. So I do like yen crosses quite a bit. 
And let's quickly look at just some of the cryptos here. Look, we had this little burst, this little burst yesterday, and we talked about don't get too carried away. It's not really showing us anything on a daily chart. There is nothing going on here. And you can see we gave it all back here. We remain neutral on cryptos altogether. Let's take a look at the changes in the currency board. So the yen is downgraded to a negative two. So we can now look at shorting the yen. The euro and the CAD got upgraded to plus two. And our cryptos, they all got downgraded. Here we are. We've got two trades to look at, CAD yen and euro yen. Let's take a look at them. I'm going to take a look at euro yen because the CAD isn't truly strong. It's not really looking to break out anywhere, but it is bouncing off the lower end of the range. All right, so here we have EuroCAD. We looked at this earlier in the week, over the weekend, and said this pullback was a great pullback. For any of you who caught that, great job. I know I've been on the sidelines all week waiting for the US CPI. We are at a resistance level. So as much as I like the pairing between Euro and Yen, we did all of our relative strength and weakness work. We found that the Euro is looking a little stronger than it was just a day or two ago. The Yen's looking a little weaker than it was. When I come in here and I look at this currency cross, I can't buy it here. Why? Because it is knocking its head into overhead resistance. I don't buy stocks at overhead resistance. I buy them after they break through, but I don't make a trade on these. So for me, Euro Yen is not a play. Let's take a look at CAD Yen. I am much less excited about CAD Yen, but if someone said, had a gun to my head saying, Rob, you have to take a trade, what is it? It would have to be CAD yen. I mean, I've got a decent little pullback here. You know, I'm snapping some lines here, support and resistance. Okay, it just bounced off the bottom of support. Bounced here. We're now crossing above this little mini resistance line. Look, I'm really having to stretch here to justify a trade. Look, I am not gonna take this trade. But if someone said you had to take a trade, okay, 107 up to 108 possibly, you know, so we're looking at something like 0.85%, 0.88. It, it's an okay trade. I'm not going to take it. Here's a great thing. As forex traders, we don't have to take the trade. No one has a gun to our head, so we can sit and wait, which is exactly what you should do. We have CPI tomorrow morning. It's likely to be very, very flat going into the CPI report. No one's going to want to take a big bet on anything. Hold your horses, keep your powder dry, and tomorrow morning there's going to be much better trading. That's my advice is to have a nice night off. Just chill out, do some great stuff in the summer. Come back tomorrow morning ready to trade. That is Currency Recap. Bye, everybody.